Hence, when first snow came uh, after Christmas, they contracted with an expert pilot from the West. Uh, he came in and flew for a week. All the dignitaries from DCNR and uh, then Forest and Waters or Environmental Resources from Harrisburg came up with the Game Commission. Here we're jump-starting the battery on the helicopter. <laughs> that was always fun. <laughs> it sure was. Uh, we flew just the pilot and one other person in the bubble and took turns all week long. And at the end of the week, counted 62 elk. They missed one. After the first year, uh, the beginning of the second year, uh, the herd increased from 63 to 85 animals. Uh, that was consistent with a uh, good population, healthy population in the West. The following year, they went from 85 to 115, and then the bottom fell out of the herd. In the spring, I couldn't find elk. <clears throat> and at first I said, well, there's either two things, one of two things happening. They're either moving out of the area or they're dying. Ha ha. And after about a week of looking, I realized they were dying. I went back to Penn State and uh, spent some time in the library researching it and came up with a brainworm theory. In a few weeks, found a mature bull, uh, 750 to 800 pounds, that was down and dying. Got a bunch of guys to help him load him up in the back of my truck. Took him into Penn State where he was necropsied uh, the next day and he was completely healthy except for the brain worm. Uh, without going into a lot of detail on the brain worm, brain worm is a nematode, it's a worm, uh, looks like a white thread. It uh, uh, occurs in the perimeter of the brain. The white-tailed deer are the principal carriers. It does not hurt white tail. Uh, studies done at Penn State have shown that at least 90% of the deer in Pennsylvania carry it, and probably the other 10% didn't. We just didn't pick it up. Uh, it doesn't hurt the meat. Uh, no effect at all on the deer. However, they pass it on to other members of the deer species, elk, caribou, moose, uh, even mule deer, and they die quite readily, when, usually when that happens. Uh, we lost, uh, the population crashed from 115 down to 35 animals within a 10-week period. I proposed a new study. Uh, I pulled together a group, a group of parasitologists, immunologists, veterinarians from Penn State, began taking blood samples in the field. We were doing antibody antigen reactions in the uh, lab to try to create a serum that would solve the problem, not just for elk in Pennsylvania, but for moose, caribou, and other animals throughout the country. The Game Commission did not want elk at the time at all and canceled the project. I was ordered to stop the work. DCNR had a different attitude. Uh, they asked me to write a management plan. Uh, I did. 20 or 30 people from Harrisburg came up and met with me in State College. Uh, among other things, I uh, encouraged habitat enhancement, especially maintaining those five clear cuts and a perpetual regenerative, regenerative stage. I also said that when the herd reached a point of 400 animals, as long as the uh, uh, elk or the brain worm problem was not uh, a major factor, that we could begin a lottery system. Uh, that has happened. Uh, at the time, however, uh, well, uh, Ralph Harrison uh, was retiring. He's uh, one of the most respected uh, DCNR foresters, I think, ever. And he wrote, the Elk of Pennsylvania. He lived right up there in Dents Run. And he wrote a very complimentary thing about me. He said, after John left, the interest in the herd reached a new low and for a time was almost forgotten. John and Nick Hunter were two of the most dedicated wildlifers I had ever known. When they left, it created a void that exist, it, uh, exists to this day. Thank you, Ralph. I'll tell you that I was recruited by Westinghouse uh, at that time. I left Penn State faculty, went to Pittsburgh, and conducted research in 30 states and provinces for the next years on uh, wildlife, ecology, and uh, a lot of it had to do with the development of large energy development uh, facilities. But I conducted the research in 31 states and provinces throughout North America and became somewhat of a specialist uh, throughout North America on, on ecology. Uh, however, between the periods of 2000 and 2006, I watched very intently 
the conflict that was ongoing uh, between sportsmen and the game commission uh, over the deer program and I decided in 2006 that since I had uh, conducted the original research on two of the three big game mammals in the state, bears and elk, why not do the third? So I put together a program uh, that was designed to very independently, unbiasedly, scientifically and thoroughly evaluate the Game Commission's deer management program to see if it was scientifically uh, justified. I presented this to Chairman Ed Stabeck uh, in House Game and Fisheries Committee, the chairman, along with Dan Sir, one of the active members, and uh, uh, it was readily accepted and placed in the state budget immediately for funding. This is a letter from Ed to Chairman Dwight Evans of the Appropriations Committee getting Evans approval uh, to put it in the state budget. Uh, everything was going fine till the night of budget passage. The budget was late that year as normal uh, most years. Uh, and on the night of July 16th, the night of budget passage at the 11th hour, it was removed from the budget. The word that I got that it was removed in, uh, uh, in, in part by uh, the Game Commission, uh, David Lebdansky, and Dwight Evans working together. For, for several months, for six months, Chairman Stabeck worked diligently to try to get alternative funding for the project. Uh, he was very committed. Uh, he worked on both sides of the aisle. Uh, this is a letter from the Republican side of the aisle uh, asking the head of the Republican caucus to contribute half of the funding for the project uh, to match half that the Democrats had uh, uh, proposed, had committed. However, every time funding was just about to come down, someone stonewalled it. Uh, while all this was going on, there was another story unfolding. Uh, ten days after budget passage, David Levdansky, uh, Representative Levdansky, walked into Ed Stabeck's office, Chairman of House Game and Fisheries, and presented him with Levdansky's own version of a proposal uh, to conduct a study of the deer program. Uh, he called it an audit. Ed said, no, thank you. <clears throat> I have a study that I'm trying to fund. And when Levdansky left the office, uh, the proposal was sent to me and asked if I would take a quick look at it and comment. Uh, it turned out here in a negative uh, fashion. I'm not sure if I fax or an email. Within 30 minutes, I contacted them and said, it's fraudulent. Uh, it's made up of 23 questions. And all 23 questions were designed to give a positive answer to the Game Commission's program. It would have verified uh, and certified the Game Commission's program as being soundly scientific. Uh, three months later, Tim Schaefer of Audubon walked into Ed's office and presented him with Audubon's version of an audit uh, of the Game Commission's program. Again, Ed said, no, thank you. I'm trying to gain funding for my own project. And when Tim Schaefer left, keeping in mind that he was the executive director of Audubon at the time, uh, again, I was called, sent a copy of it, and asked to comment. Well, immediately I called back and said, it's the same exact proposal that Levdansky had tried to pawn off on you three months ago. It's a fix. It was not written by Levdansky. It was written by someone with great knowledge of biology and the DEER program, and every question was slyly designed to give a positive answer in favor of the Game Commission's program. As you can see here, uh, if you would look, you could read every line is exactly the same. It was just simply com printed from the same computer. This is a multi-page report. This is a copy of just the front page. <laughs> 